Welcome to the 2010 Harriet Bishop Science Fair video on judging projects and the scientific method. This video was developed for Science Fair judges, but parents and students and others are welcome to view it as well. In this video, we're going to review how to use the scoring sheet to judge projects, as well as cover some basics of the scientific method. We'll provide more information on the overall process at the judging orientation. We recommend you have the handouts provided via email with you as you review the video. These include the judging form, an overview of scientific method, and a sheet on controlled experiments. First, at the top of the form, the student name and project number will already be listed when you receive this sheet. And you'll be asked to fill in your judge number, which will be provided the morning of the fair. This is also where the total score for the project is entered by judges after judging is complete. The next section on the form is called Required Items. Each project must have each of these items, so as a judge, simply check the box if the project contains the item. If not, leave the box blank. It often helps to check for these items when you get to preview, preview the project before the judging starts with the students. It will give you more time to spend with the students during the interview. Each item is worth one point, so add up the checked boxes and enter the total at the right. Most of these are very black and white, but there are some situations where there is an actual question as to whether or not a project has fulfilled one of the required items, and one of the head judges will be around to help answer those questions. For the presentation section and the remaining scoring sections, judges will use a five-point scale. So first, let's talk about that scale. This will be different for those who have judged at Harriet Bishop before. This year, it's a five-point scale that matches the scoring method used at the state science fair level. Judges are encouraged to approach each project from the middle of the scale, assuming that a given project or criteria that's being judged is a three, which is considered satisfactory. Then, based on the criteria, they can award a three or up or down, depending on the quality of the criteria. Elements that are better than standard would be given a four. Elements that are excellent and go above and beyond would be given a five. This would probably be only awarded in a few cases. On the other hand, Elements that are being judged in a project that are slightly less than standard and could use some improvement could be given a 2. And elements that are unsatisfactory or absent can be given a 1. This will likely be awarded in only a few cases. Remember to be fair and honest with your judging. The students do not see the scores, and it's important that the best projects are clearly identified through the judging process. Now, let's focus on the presentation elements. Judges are welcome to make these scores during the preview if they have time. These elements are related specifically to the project display and the accompanying notebook. For example, note the final element, attention to spelling. A project with no typos and excellent or perfect grammar would get a 5. A project with just one typo and excellent grammar might get a 4. A project with a few typos and strong grammar would get a 3. A project with a number of typos or poor grammar would get a 2. And a project full of typos and lacking grammar would get a 1. Don't worry about memorizing that example, it's just to demonstrate how to apply the five-point scale. In each case, use your best judgment about which score to give. With, the, with each scoring section, add all the individual element scores to create a total and it at the right. In the next section, judges will evaluate how well the student followed the scientific method in their project. It's important to note that there are many different kinds of projects students will create. But keep in mind the science fair guidelines call for students to apply the scientific method and those projects that are selected for advancement to Mankato will best adhere to this approach. We strongly encourage judges to review the sheet that outlines the elements of the scientific method, as well as the sheet on controlled experiments, to reacquaint themselves. As with the previous section, judges can use the same 1 through 5 scale. For each of the nine elements, use your best judgment to assign a score. For each, we've tried to provide some guiding criteria to help you assign a score. For example, note the element statement of problem. Consider, is the problem stated as a question? Is it clear? Does it try to account for just one variable? Is it an original question? A project that covers all of those criteria in a strong way would receive a five. A project that represents a true statement of the problem, but is lacking in one or two other criteria, could receive a four. A project that is a true statement of the problem, but lacks all other aspects, could receive a three. A project that doesn't have a true statement of the problem, but is strong in other ways, would receive a two. And a project that doesn't have a true statement of the problem and has no other positive aspects would receive a 1. The last element listed, overall, gives you the opportunity to reward a project that has covered all elements in a strong or positive way or to penalize one that has been weak. 
Note that the most common challenges for students are studying a control group or focusing on the impact of just one variable. Here are three examples to help demonstrate how different projects might apply the scientific method. First, a great example of an experiment that follows the scientific method would start with a statement of the problem such as, how does the amount of fertilizer used affect plant growth? The test variable will be the amount of fertilizer used, so all other variables and conditions should be controlled for. The control group itself would be a plant with no fertilizer. In this case, a poorly constructed experiment might ask, how does the amount of fertilizer used impact plant growth and its lifespan? Or, how does the amount of fertilizer and water used impact plant growth? In the next example, suppose a student wanted to see the impact of the size of wheels on the speed of a car using a model car. Again, there is one variable, the size of wheels, and one result being measured, the speed of the car. In this case, the control group isn't obvious. You can't use a car with no wheels. However, the student could pick almost any size wheel, then vary the wheel size either up or down in the experiment. This again would be an acceptable application of the scientific method. Finally, consider a project that sought to determine which brand of paper towel was the most absorbent. There is one result being measured, absorbency, but the rest of the experiment doesn't follow the scientific method. For example, a student could arbitrarily select a control group, say bounty paper towels. But then, what is the one variable being changed? The name of the paper towel, Target or Walmart or Bounty, has no impact on absorbency. If the student found that the Target brand was the most absorbent, how would they explain why? There could be many reasons, the type of paper used in the paper towel, how it was manufactured, the thickness of the paper, etc. Because they didn't isolate just one variable, there's no way to know what is really impacting the different level of levels of absorbency. In this example, the project would score low related to scientific method, and those scores across the different questions will reflect that. The final judge section is based on the interview with the student. The elements listed should provide a good guide for questions to ask. For example, to judge the second element, a judge might ask, so tell me, how did you come to your conclusion? Of course, judges are encouraged to ask whatever questions they feel are warranted. This is a good time to provide a judging tip. It helps to complete judging forms for each project during the interview process or right after. That way, it's easier to remember the interview dialogue and the project itself before we move on to judge the next project. Remember that some students are less comfortable with the interview portion of the judging process. Sometimes it helps to kneel or sit on the chair to be at eye level. With some students, you may have to work a little harder to draw out the information you need, but just remember to be patient. The final portion of the judging form allows for judges to provide feedback to students on what was strong about their project and what they may need to work on. It is very important to provide feedback here, as this is the only portion the judging students will see. So, it's the only feedback they can use to learn from the process and improve their project next time, or to compete at the state level. While students need honest feedback, please be constructive in your comments. Well, that's it. As always, we appreciate the time you're giving as a volunteer. The Harriet Bishop Science Fair couldn't happen without you. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to email me, Chris Bevelo. Thanks for your time.